Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with the misconception video series, and this time it's the watery planet Moon. <laughs> Moon is a very misunderstood planet in uh, Vedic astrology. In fact, it's uh, at times overrated, and at times it is underrated, actually. Because uh, in traditional sense, they say Moon is the most important planet in Vedic astrology. But in my experience, I have seen traditional astrologers don't see anything else. They will just see the Moon, which is sometimes not giving us the full picture. And nowadays, the modern astrologers, I see them also doing blunders. They will say, ah, oh, it's the Moon. It's an old planet. It doesn't matter these days. <laughs> these days, Mercury matters more, right? They say like this, but actually it's not true. Moon matters still. And the other planets also mattered before. Okay, so today we shall uh, declutter some of the misconceptions which people have about the moon. And I have also made videos on uh, misconceptions about Rahu. Okay, and one or two planets, other planets, I guess, Ascendant Lord and Tenth Lord. So if you have not watched it, please watch it. I'll put it at the end of the video here. Okay. And yes, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, please go to my website down below. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you to improve the moon. Oh yeah, and I, I had also made a video on moon remedies long back. So if you, uh, if you feel that you have difficulties with the moon, you can also watch that video. Okay, I'll put it here. So what is the first misconception about the moon? That... Uh, it controls your emotions well uh, it controls but it is not the only planet which controls your emotions this is very crucial because many times you will see uh, people uh, who have you know debilitated moon or afflicted moon uh, they are stable emotionally why not that astrology doesn't work but there is a hell lot of things when you talk of emotions the first thing you must check when you check anything is the Lord of the Ascendant. What is the situation of the Lord of the Ascendant? You do not check that. You will directly jump to the moon. Then you must check the sun. Then you must check the moon. Yes, you must check these three. But there are so many other things when you talk of emotional well-being. That is the fourth house. Fourth house is very crucial. Fourth house, as I had made a video long back, in that I had said, a fourth house is the house of absorption. How do you absorb things? Yes, tenth house is uh, what you show to the world. Fourth house is who you are. <laughs> All right. So therefore, fourth house tells you how how do you take things in life? Good things, bad things. Do you get uh, hyper excited when you get good things in life? And do you? Get suicidal tendencies if bad things happen. Do you feel like committing suicide or killing yourself or murdering somebody? Or do you go around gossiping or, you know, trying to pull somebody's, as they say, pulling legs of somebody, <laughs> trying to pull somebody down? Do you have the crab mentality? Fourth house is cancer, number four. Now you know why it is called the crab. Mm -hmm. Have you seen crab sometimes? When one crab tries to go up, the other crab uh, pulls the uh, pulls it down, right? So, what kind of a mentality do you have? Now, I'm not saying that uh, if you have sun, moon, or ascendant in Cancer, you are like a crab. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, how is your mentality? That is seen from the fourth house. To what extent are you envious? Are you jealous? Are you like snakes? You know? Have you seen snakes? Even if you go around without doing anything, they will just come and bite you for no reason even if you don't want to harm them that's what the scriptures say or are you like the crabs oh, oh. <laughs> i will pull this person on how dare this person surpass me how dare this person cross me how dare this person say like this <laughs> so what kind of a mentality do you have so there because see if you if you have a crab mentality or a snake mentality, as the scriptures say, then you will always be unhappy in this world because there will be somebody or the other who will surpass you in something or the other. There will be somebody who is more beautiful than you. 
somebody who is more famous than you, somebody who is more smart than you, somebody who is more intelligent than you, somebody who is more rich than you, somebody who is more happy than you. Always there will be somebody who will exceed you in some area of life. So if you're always sitting with this envy that how can this person surpass me, then you end up becoming more miserable actually. Therefore, the fourth house is very important. The fourth Lord is also very important when you judge emotions. Then the other planet which is very important is the fifth house, fifth Lord. That is the planet you must check. The fifth Lord is very crucial and the ninth Lord also. They Now you may be thinking, oh, but uh, five and nine, how they are related to the emotions? Well, it's related with DNA. Why? Because ninth house is the house of the father. What you get from your mother, father, the fourth and the ninth, very, 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 very crucial. So therefore, next time you say that moon is the only planet which controls emotions, keep an eye on these three houses, four, five, nine, all right? Do not forget. Then another house which you ignore when it comes to emotions is the second house. It's so very important, I have seen. An afflicted second house, bang on, addictions are there on the list, okay? If things go wrong and if the horoscope is very bad, in that case, I have seen always. Now, somebody who has an afflicted second house may not have addictions, but if somebody has addictions, they definitely have a problem with the second house. It's like the other way around is always true. All right. So if you have an afflicted second house, the probability, why? Because the second house is the house which give you, gives you a sense of belonging, basically. Therefore, you will see many people who are very rich, who are very attractive, who have a lot of followers, who are very powerful, who are very authoritative, who are very commanding, who are like, uh, as they say, an apple of the eye. Even they are into addictions. Why? Because they may have everything, but they lack a sense of belonging. Second house is the family. Right? Now, you may have a family, but do you have that sense of belonging to the family? That is seen from the second house, the second lord. So, the second, fourth, fifth, ninth, these are vital for your mental well being. So do not judge anything from the moon itself, okay? Therefore, this is very crucial that you uh, don't make blanket statements. Oh, moon is in Scorpio, your, your whole mental life is ruined, okay? It is definitely not like this. And other things you should also check is uh, which planets are there in the watery signs. Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces because these planets will color your emotions always 100% I have seen. Okay. Now another misconception is if moon is conjunct malefics then it's terrible, it's very bad, it's pathetic, it's worse. Or if moon is conjunct uh, benefics it's very good. Alright, let me give you an example. Now this could be true in a generic sense but you cannot take it as a thumb rule. Why? Let me give you an example. If you, if, if, if the person is very promiscuous, if a person has propensity to cheat, in that case, a moon Venus conjunction can be the worst thing that a person can have. Why? Because in that case, what happens? The horoscope has tendency for cheating. Now this moon is being afflicted by Venus. <laughs> Why? How can, how can Venus afflict a planet? Yes, it can do. If the traits of Venus are used in a wrong direction, which happens very frequently in Kali Yuga these days. Most of the cases at least, or many, more than half. <laughs> so then what happens? The mind is constantly being pushed and pulled and yelled by traits of Venus. So then the person feels great joy in doing all these things. Right, cheating and you know jumping like dogs and monkeys from one partner to the other. So in that case, a moon Venus conjunction is the worst thing to have. It's like the most deadliest thing you can have. Similarly, um, suppose suppose if you are planning to uh, go go on a spiritual journey, okay. So in that case, a moon Venus conjunction can be good or it may be very difficult because then your mind may always gravitate towards luxuries. Suppose you hear that in Haridwar there is a sadhu who has come for giving a lecture. Suppose you are near to Haridwar. Haridwar is a place in India, a very beautiful place. Then 
you might get this feeling, oh, but if I go there, is there a three-star restaurant, a hotel there? Where will I stay? Because Venus is the luxury, right? You always want the luxuries. It could be possible if Moon Venus are conjunct in your house. That could be possible, right? So in that case, you may want a Moon Saturn conjunction more than a Moon Venus conjunction, okay? And on the other side, they say if Moon and uh, Saturn is conjunct, then it's very bad for material life. No, it is not bad. It depends on your horoscope. For example, if your overall horoscope is too much luxury prone, then, uh, then it becomes very difficult to judge is Moon Saturn better or Moon Venus better because Moon Venus can make you even more luxury prone. Okay. And Moon Saturn can uh, give you that kind of a tendency that you have a lot of luxuries, but still you are not happy. Okay? So then it will depend on how the trines are situated. How much focus do you have in life or you are just running behind luxuries, okay? wasting time, uh, wasting money. So in that case, a Moon Saturn conjunction may be good if you have a good focus in life and then you may be, okay, I have these luxuries. Okay, I'm happy with this. Now, another thing is about, you know, Moon and Rahu or Moon and Ketu. They say uh, uh, these people are by default cheaters or liars or something like this. Or these people are always confused. Well, that could be true. I have also seen in my experience. Uh, this holds true, but not for everybody. So wh why do I say this? Because if this is present in a good house and these are supported by the Lords of the Trines and the overall horoscope is good, then Moon Rahu Moon Ketu conjunction can enable the person to see things, uh, see means not literally with the eyes, to understand things which uh, normally people cannot. So in that case, this can be very good. But again, as I said, if the person has a very promiscuous horoscope and propensity to cheat, then this can be lethal. This can be very dangerous. Okay. Now another misconception is Moon in trines will make you overly emotional. <laughs> In fact, I've seen some astrologers uh, who if they, suppose you go to them, uh, you are a man and you say, oh, this is a horoscope of a girl, prospective bride, I want to uh, check the compatibility. I know astrologers who will say, oh, moon is in 159, it's very bad, you know, this, this person will be very emotional and will be crying all the time. No, it's not like this, all right? Yes, that can make the person a bit sensitive to emotional ups and downs, that can happen, but Moon in 159 doesn't mean the person will always be crying. <laughs> it's like rainy season all the time. It's it's not necessary. Okay. Moon in 159 can be great if properly used. It depends on um it depends on how the flow of the horoscope is. If the horoscope is indicating depression, then this can be the worst thing to have in the horoscope. 159. But if the horoscope is indicating, you know, greater intuition, spiritual progress, bhakti yoga is indicated in the horoscope, then this is the best thing to have. That is why Jupiter gets exalted in the sign of cancer because Krishna says, the Gita culminates. Krishna says, no, bhakti maim param krito. He says, unless you are attached to me, that essentially that's what the crux of the Gita is, that unless you are attached to me at an emotional level, you cannot make spiritual progress. At the end, you know, the the pinnacle of spiritual progress that is taught by the Pandava, that's taught by uh, Devi Kunti, that is taught by Dhruva Maharaj, that is taught by Ambarish. These are all great characters from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is what they teach. They are very much, very much attached to uh, Lord Vishnu or his incarnations. You know, like Bali Maharaj is attached to Bamandev. That is from the sign of cancer. That is the moon actually. Okay. And that's not the Libra or Taurus kind of attachment where you are wanting something back from your husband or wife or your boyfriend, girlfriend. This is a very selfless thing to have. Okay, So, so therefore, this can be a very good thing if done with a lot of spiritual practices and a lot of meditation and a lot of, you know, like Kirtan, singing, absorption and all this. This can be a very good placement. No, otherwise, if depression is indicated in the chart, pessimism is indicated, or you know, or trying to pull others down, then this can be a very bad, bad placement. Okay. Now, another misconception is uh, exalted moon is very good; the person is always stable, and debilitated moon is the person is terrible always. <laughs> 
so uh, this is also not true well um, now this can help an exalted moon can help you but again an exalted moon can be uh, very it can be the worst thing to have if the chart indicates infidelity you know, because of kritika nakshatra and rohini nakshatra especially you know love triangles you know or uh, three four maybe many <laughs> <laughs> all right so then this can be very bad even even moon in scorpio can be horrendous with uh, moon in anuradha sometimes it can be it can be miserable for affairs or somebody may leave you and go all right so it it, it depends on what is there in the dasha so for example if a person has moon exalted and then the dashas are uh, promising good married life good means not great but decent married life for the next 20 30 years or 40 years then moon in uh, taurus is a great thing to have and then uh, suppose uh, if your dashas are indicating 6th house or it's linked with the 5th house or the 8th or the 12th these are houses of infidelity okay when the 5th is linked with this 8th and 12th these uh, houses not very good and if the dashas are running then this can really uh, give you tendency for extramarital affairs then moon in scorpio and moon in taurus they can be equally notorious and horrendous <laughs> all right so but it can manifest in a different way moon in taurus can become very seductive and moon in scorpio can also be seductive but they they may have this fear and insecurity always so now if you are doing infidelity which one is good to be confident with moon in taurus or to be insecure with moon in scorpio both are terrible right you, you you are ending in hell by either of them so therefore none of these placements are good if the overall horoscope is indicating bad things okay so therefore uh, do not uh, do not take this blindly these are some misconceptions which are there okay and another misconception is uh, moon and jupiter conjunction is very good well it can be good uh, but may not be very good all the time mm -hmm. it gives you jupiter moon can do the worst damage to you sometimes if uh, this this passive not passive what do you say uh, procrastination yes perfect procrastinate why see procrastination what do, what do you mean by procrastination procrastination means okay you are delaying something okay why are you delaying something because of two reasons because you are lazy but the other reason is you have hope that you will do it in the future right that's a hope in tamoguna it's a fake hope actually it's fake optimism it's uh, it's like pseudo optimism it's uh, very low class optimism that oh yeah i won't do it today i will do it tomorrow so jupiter and moon gaj kesri yoga whatever you call it or in trines to each other or aspecting each other or conjunct together can give you this fake optimism which makes you so optimistic so optimistic so optimistic that you never do anything in life <laughs> you are like oh yeah it will happen one day as they sing this song you know hum honge kamyaab ek din wo ek din kab aayega kisi ko nahi pata <laughs> so therefore um If, if if you see a moon jupiter conjunction and you say oh wow this is a great horoscope you know gaj kesri yoga is there this yoga is there that yoga is there then i mean what if the chart indicates depression or if the chart indicates you know uh, pessimistic behavior procrastination mm -hmm. or what if is the chart for murder the murder will be very hopeful jupiter is this balloon which blows up things out of the uh, air and that gives you so much hope hope that things which you know should should actually break in your life will one day work which you also know it doesn't but that gives you that fake optimism okay so therefore uh, this conjunction can be very good if used in a proper way but the question is is the person using it properly or is the person using it to be more uh, pessimistic or you know procrastinating things okay procrastinating you know their eating their whatever their studies their career their marriage whatever it is or their overall well being basically anything in life okay just procrastinating it will happen it will happen i will do it i will do it but then are you doing it are you making efforts in the right direction then this is a very good combination right? then this is a great blessing then this can be good for you then you can rejoice otherwise well
is the worst thing to have all right there you go so there are many misconceptions and i put some videos here you can watch them for more understanding about the moon all right and the other videos misconceptions they are on the way what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him if you are new then please subscribe below my website for consultations is also down below right thank you very much